Simon, we asked our uh, Drummond Club members to write in any rules queries that we might have and that we were going to pass them on to you and we've had a great response. Excellent. So Excellent. let's uh, let's do it now. Gail uh, wrote that she was playing at a country course earlier this year and that one of the ladies teed off, hit the ball off the toe of her club, had ricocheted it off a tree and ended up unplayable behind the tee. So having found her ball, is she able to hit three off the tee? Yeah, one of the options under the unplayable ball rule is to go back to where you played your previous stroke from. So in this instance, the player had played their previous stroke from the teeing ground, so they would just go back to the teeing ground under penalty of one stroke, tee your ball up, um, and they're back in business. Uh, alternately, you could have a, a 10 foot putt from above the hole on one of these dynamite Melbourne sandbelt greens and hit it a little bit too hard and knock it into the bunker. You could try to play it out of the bunker or you could just institute the unplayable ball rule option, place the ball back where you um, hit the original putt from under penalty of one stroke um, and have another go. And Guy was having a 19th hole post-mortem which we know happens quite frequently and one of his playing partners was playing out of a bunker and hit the ball in his follow through, effectively hitting the ball twice. Um, What's the penalty there? If the player accidentally hits the ball a second time uh, in the process of making the original stroke, it's just a one stroke penalty. That just gets added on to the, the actual stroke that was played. Interesting point to note is that if the player had actually hit the ball an extra two times in the follow through, it'd still just be one extra penalty stroke. So again, to clarify, he, he's in the bunker, he hits the ball, he strikes it a second time, but that shot doesn't count, but the penalty does count. That's right. The second, the second hit of the ball is not deemed to be a stroke, um, but the player gets a penalty stroke. So if the player had played their second stroke from the bunker, that's two for the shot out of the bunker, one stroke penalty, and the next ball, um, the next stroke that they're playing is going to be their fourth stroke. And Simon, uh, Jim uh, wants to know what happens if he loses his ball in GUR? Uh, if the player loses their ball uh, in GUR and it's known or virtually certain that it has been lost in the GUR, there's no penalty and the ball's deemed to lie at the position where the ball last crossed the margin of the GUR. So you're not guessing where the ball ended up, you're guessing where the ball last crossed the margin of the GUR. And the player drops a ball under the, um, the ordinary GUR options from that, um, using the point of reference as where the ball last crossed the margin of the GUR. So what happens if Jim isn't really quite sure, but he kind of hopes that the ball was lost in the GUR? Uh, when we've lost our ball, we always hope that it's ended up in, um, in a good position or a position from which we can obtain free relief. But if Jim's not, if it's not known or virtually certain that the ball was lost in the GUR, uh, then it's just standard lost ball procedure and Jim needs to go back to where he played his previous stroke from um, and take the, uh, the one stroke penalty. So if Jim had hit his second ball into the, the questionable area, um, it's one stroke penalty and he'd be playing his fourth shot from the original position.